Hey everybody, so we are doing lesson 2.5. So yesterday we were talking about probability. Um, we really went into the fundamental counting principle, which tells us if we have two different events, we're gonna look at the number of outcomes each of those have, and we're gonna just multiply them together to figure out the um, number of possible outcomes there are. And so, Today, we're kind of building on that lesson. We're still in the same unit, um, and we still have that same essential question of how can you find the number of possible outcomes of one or more events? And in yesterday's lesson, you heard me talking a lot about uh, the differences between doing like a table or a tree diagram and just using the fundamental counting principle. And you'll see that in play today um, with the notes and with the homework. So let's go ahead and dive in. So we've got one more vocabulary word to learn today, and that is compound event. A compound event consists of two or more events, so we have to have more than one. Um, as with a single event, the probability of a compound event is the ratio, ratio means fraction, of the two, of the number of favorable outcomes to the number of possible outcomes. And so this is getting back to that theoretical and experimental probability that we were talking about with the uh, ratio of the favorable outcomes to the number of possible outcomes. And so let's go ahead and get this first uh, problem done when we are finding the probability of a compound event. So in example two, what is the probability of rolling a number that is greater than four and flipping tails? So let's go back and look at example two. So here's example two. Again, we wanna find the probability of rolling a number greater than four and we want to flip tails. And so it is really nice to have this table all laid out for us because with this table, what we can do is we know that we want to flip tails. So we want this row right here. So that satisfies the flipping tables portion of it. We also want to roll a number greater than four. So the only numbers greater than four are five and six. And so our favorable outcome, what we want, is going to be where those cross. And so when I'm looking at this, I see two places where they cross. Crosses right here and right there. And so that is two out of a total of 12 possible outcomes. We're going to simplify that fraction. So it's one over six. And then that's gonna be our answer. So let me get the better version out for you. And there you go. So two favorable outcomes. Um, so we're going to have two over 12, and that's for the probability of a number greater than four and tails. Again, simplify. And so we're going to say that the probability is one sixth, or if we wanted to change that into a percent, it would be 16 and two thirds percent. And so you did this a little bit yesterday in the um, uh, IXL as well. Um, so hopefully you were able to kind of sort of figure that out. Um, and if you haven't done that IXL yet because you were confused, hopefully this is um, a good explanation for you. You're looking for where they meet. And so if you can think about that in your head, great. I think it's a lot easier if you write out a table like this and see where those two intersect. The only problem is if you run into uh, more than two, you can't really make a table. Um, so in that case, you could just make a, a tree diagram and then just circle the ones that meet the requirements at the end. Now we're going to find the probability of this compound event. So you flip nickels or you flip three nickels. What is the probability of flipping two heads and one tail? And so in order to do this, we have to go ahead and make our tree diagram because we're flipping three different coins. So for our first coin, we could either go heads or tails. I'm gonna do this more in the middle. Let me back up there. 
we could either go heads or tails from that. Those are our two possible outcomes. So if we go ahead and we get heads, we're going to flip a second nickel. The second nickel has two possible outcomes, either heads or tails again. So we're gonna go heads and tails. If we ended up flipping tails from the first event, again, it's the same thing, heads or tails. Oops. And then we're going to flip our last one. So our last one, again, either heads or tails. Heads or tails, heads or tails, heads or tails. So if your list is, or your tree diagram is really organized like how mine is, it's really easy to see um, what is happening. And so we want two heads and one tail. So if we flip the coin and we get heads, heads again, heads again, that's not going to work out. Heads, heads, tails. We got two heads and one tails. That does work. Heads, tails, heads. That works. Heads, tails, tails. That doesn't work. We're going to do the same thing to this side. Tails, heads, heads. That has two heads and one tail, so that works. Tails, heads, he tails. That does not work. And then both of these just start off with tails, tails. And so both of them are not going to work. And so you can see that we ended up with three check marks, which means we're going to have three favorable outcomes over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight total outcomes. If your uh, tree diagram isn't as organized and it's harder to see it, you can always go ahead and go heads, heads, heads and just write that down. And so at the end, you can see what has happened. This one's heads, heads, tails, heads, heads, tails. And so that's another trick if um, you're having trouble seeing the organization. It's going to help you out a lot if you give yourself a lot of room to make these tree diagrams like how I did here. Um, and if you really spread out your arrows, especially at the beginning, Notice how my arrows are very, very spread out um, and then I spread them out again, but I make sure that I think about what's going to be happening. I know at the end or each time I'm going to have two arrows coming from each one. And so I wanted to make sure that I gave myself enough room for that. And so the answer for this one is going to be three out of eight. And again, you can always do a horizontal tree diagram like shown here, um, and that does help you organize again. Notice how they did the heads, 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 just like I was telling you to do before. Um, they also did color, um, so you can see that this is the first coin, this is the second coin, and that is the third coin. Now I've got some problems for you to try. So this is going to be on your own for the rest of this. So in example two, what is the probability of rolling at most a four and flipping heads? So just as a reminder, you are going to look at where they cross. So rolling at most four. So we want at most four. One, two, three. And at most means that four is included. And then looking horizontally, we want to flip heads. This is the heads. And so that's where that meets up. So go ahead and finish out this problem and tell me what the answer is. Hopefully you figured out that there is four possible or four favorable outcomes over 12 possible. And that simplifies to one third. And so one third would be your final answer there. If you wanted to change that into a percentage, it'd be 33%.
Next one in example five, what is the probability of flipping at least two tails? And so this is looking back at example five, um, where we flipped three nickels, what's the probability of flipping two heads and one tails? So we wanna flip at least two tails in this one. Um, so at bare minimum, there should be two. Hopefully you still have your uh, tree diagram that you did with me. Um, so that should be a really quick problem for you to do. So go ahead and try that problem out now. And so this is the drawing of my tree diagram that I did. All I did was saw that this was three heads, so that's not going to work. Two heads and one tails, that doesn't work. Only one tails there, but this one does have two tails. I did the same thing over on this side and found out that there were four possible or four favorable outcomes out of our eight possible outcomes. And so that means that it's going to be one half. So 50% probability. Next one says you are rolling two number cubes. So a D6, six sides. Um, what is the probability of rolling double threes? So think about our favorable outcome being a three, how many threes are on a dice? And you wanna hit that twice. Go ahead and try this out. Hopefully you made it to this answer right here. It is one out of 36. So if you look at my tree diagram, um, you could have also made a table for this one because you're only rolling two number cubes. Um, I did a shorthanded tree diagram here since there are so many possible outcomes. Um, so I did you know, my first roll. So I could have gotten a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. But I know the only thing I want is a three. I want double threes. And so I took my first three and I ignored everything else because I know that every single outcome is not going to work for these ones because I had to roll a three at first. And then I rolled my second number cube and I, you know, ended up with the numbers one through six. But that three is the only one that's going to make me happy. And so at the very end, there's only one combination of those two dice that's going to make me happy. Out of those 36 different possible solutions, I know it's 36 because of the fundamental counting principle. So I want you to think about the probability of rolling a three on one number cube and a three on the second number cube. And then I want you to take those two numbers and figure out how to get one out of 36 by doing that. I'm not gonna tell you the answer. I want you to try to figure this one out on your own. Um, so if you have any questions about what I'm talking about there, just send me an email. Um, and I'd be happy to discuss it with you and help you get to that final conclusion. Um, but there is like a little bit of an easier way to do this if you're able to figure it out. I've got one last problem for you. It says in example one, what is the probability of choosing a stuffed crust Hawaiian pizza? So let's bring up example one. And here is the uh, work from example one. Um, so we've got two different crust options, and then we've got four different style options. Um, so try to figure out by yourself, what's the probability of choosing a stuffed crust Hawaiian pizza? Pause the video, check your answer with me when you're done. And hopefully you ended up with the answer one out of eight. So if you have any questions about this lesson, please just send me an email. I'd be happy to talk about it with you.